Hello, I'm Oklahoma City Artist in Residence Erica Bonavita, and I'm here today to teach you how to make a abstracted flower painting. This is brought to you by the City of Oklahoma City and the Oklahoma City Arts Council. So the first thing to think about when you're creating an abstracted flower painting would be where are you going to draw your inspiration from. And this is one that I just think there is so much potential to go in any direction you want. Um, I think that first and foremost you might want to look in your own backyard and see what you have growing. If you're an avid gardener, you'll probably have a lot of inspiration. Um, and, and even if you're not, your, your yard holds a lot of really interesting things. Even clover is really gorgeous because it's got that really beautiful contrast of white and green. Um, if you don't have anything in your own backyard that really sparks your imagination, you can visit the Oklahoma City Botanical Gardens. There's lots of public parks that have beautiful landscaping. So there's a lot of potential just around us. You can photograph this, you could sketch this, you can um, do drawings of it for inspiration for later paintings. Um, and if you choose not to go in the direction of something that you can find locally, you can always look online. There's a lot of pictures of different types of flowers. You do want to make sure that you have permission to use any image that you do choose. So then once you've got something, you can really just try to make it your own. Um, this is a very loose style. You're not necessarily looking for this to be specifically recognizable as um, a particular flower. So if it ends up just being little splotches of color, really that's a success because we're looking for more of a, an effect or a mood from this. So let's get started. Um, the first thing obviously we're going to need our supplies. We'll be working with paint. Um, you can do this with acrylic or oil paint. I personally work with oil paints. Just get you a basic set that's got all of the colors that you're gonna need. All you really need is a basic set of primaries and some black and white. If you choose to have a little bit more expanded palette, then that works as well. Um, so I personally will be working on raw, unstretched canvas today, and I just sewed these. You can also find um, stretched canvas at, hard, at um, art supply stores, and you could use wood panels, and you could really choose to paint on anything if you wanted to paint on the surface of a table or a pot or... Um, you know, anything that's not going to absorb the paint too much, you are welcome to go crazy on. This, this is such a um, versatile style that you could really put this on anything. So let's go ahead and get started. For the painting that I'm going to be creating with you today, I'm going to be using my unstretched canvas. And this is a panel that's previously been painted on and I've just gone ahead and made it a gray color. If you have a painting that you've created and are not, not super satisfied with it, it is 100% okay to paint over that and go ahead and do something else. Um, even the best painter in the world is not satisfied with everything they've ever made. So it's fine for you to continue to move forward with that piece and you don't have to accept it the way it is. Um, so today we're going to be painting a flower from my garden. This is Verbena. And when you're doing a painting in this style, you do not have to stick to the image that you're working with. This is not going to be a exact replica. Uh, in fact, we'll probably change up a little bit of the flow of this. Um, some of the colors will be different. You really get to take this and run wild with it. To get started, I'm really just going to block in some areas where I imagine some flowers would be. And I'm following a basic principle of painting where I am having things done in uneven numbers. Aesthetically, uneven numbers are more pleasing to the eye. So instead of having two flowers in my painting, I've chosen to have three groupings of flowers. Once I've decided where my groupings of flowers will be, I start to add in some background greenery. We're not looking for any specific shapes here. Uh, we're just looking for some contrast with the flower colors and a little bit of color variety so that our eye has somewhere to travel around in the painting. To this point, I've been using just a brush to lay everything in very loosely, but I will soon be switching over to the palette knife 
so that we can start to add in some visual interest with texture and a little bit of movement by directing the palette knife. I like to take the palette knife and load it up with a couple of different colors and I'll do this by mixing the colors on my palette and I'll have one or two maybe three different tones and I take that same palette knife and I drag it through the image on the canvas so that I'm getting streaks of different colors and it's a little bit of a surprise for me as the artist and I think that adds a lot of visual interest. An important thing to note is that you don't want to leave any one area with one color or one tone. You want to add a little bit of variety. So I have some dark purples working in here. I'm adding in little hints of blue and a lot of pink. And this just kind of breaks it up a little bit and it gives you a reason to travel around the painting and see all of the different colors. As you reach a point where you're fairly happy with the composition, you can begin to amp up the tones a little bit and create stronger contrast. So brighter brights, darker darts. So we're throwing in a lot more chartreuse here to contrast against the pinks. And that's how you create an abstracted flower painting. Thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it.